Hello and welcome back to the channel. I thought I would do a review on this Volkswagen Scirocco R line. I'll have a quick walk around. This is the 2 litre TSI, I think it's 210 brake horsepower. So, this car, I mean, the R line is supposed to just be um, looks good kind of thing, uh, it, but not quite with the performance of the R. But I personally think 210 brake horsepower is more than adequate so this car's been specced up a little bit from the fact that it's got the full um adaptive uh, suspension on it as well so I'll, I'll go through that when we get back but i love the color maybe leave a comment below let us know what the if anybody's into these cars what the exact color is called you know candy apple kind of color springs to mind to me um but i think it looks lovely i remember when this uh, last got this car brand new it just stands out in the color i'm not a big fan of vag as everyone knows not a huge fan of them uh, i don't personally think they're as good as what people make them out to be but i do like the look of these shirokos that are something a bit uh special and this car's got quite a lot of nice spec and as you can see there you know the old-fashioned if you remember back in the day with the golfs and borers it's got the red s and i which means it's the 210 brake horsepower one where it's 208 or something like that but you know map these things up and you can get crazy power out of them um you know that that uh, you know th th this car is just as it stands it would look fantastic polished up and everything uh, i love these wheels as well uh what size are these let's have a look it's barely a tire on them in fact i can't even see the size because they're buried into the grass 19 inch 19 inch wheels i'll just confirm that's right yeah definitely 19 inch really nice twisted spoke alloys this car's nice, nice, it lacks a few little specs, like, you know, like some Xenon lights wouldn't have gone amiss, just your standard uh, halogens, um, front fog lights, your indicators down there. One thing that lets these cars down, with a lot of cars of this era, about 2013, they're like Volvos, the headlamps run all the time, really annoying. It's what this car's actually been in for, actually, it's burning out all the uh, back of the bulb holders. Um, bit rubbish because your headlights run all the time, so at night you're driving along, and you think, I'll just actually explain this in the car. Now, there's been a lot of crashes involved with this. So you're driving along with the lights on, off. Um, in fact, I'll do it, I'll show you now. See if they're on. Here's, here's an example of it. So as you can see, the light switch is off. But your headlamps are on. If you come to the back of the car. See? Your lights are on there. And now what there was, there was an upgrade on these. Where when you used to put the lights on to on the back lights would switch on so what used to happen with these cars was your lights would be on all the time i know for a fact the polos are like this where the headlights run all the time and then when you actually flick your headlights on to the on position it switches your back lights on so if you're driving along at night you you, you can see that your headlamps are on you forgot to turn the switch and here the whole back of your car is in darkness there's no lights on the back so I think on this car it's had the update done where it, the, the backlights are on all the time. But I'm not keen to that idea having all your headlamps and backlights running all the time like an old fashioned Volvo. I mean these newer cars we are LED running lights, fair enough. So so yeah, we'll go around. Um, there's a few options, obviously you've got your LED mirrors which you have in most cars nowadays. Um, go out the back, it's got the factory fitted parking sensors as well as Another thing with these TSI engines as well, if you notice, you would probably think that was a diesel, wouldn't you? Believe it or not, the petrols push out more particulates than the diesels do with a DBF one. And these engines have a lot of problems, which I'll go into in a minute, with engine failure and everything. This one's got low mileage and it's fine, but they weren't a very good line of engines, these uh, TSI engines, which was only the, one of the main things that put me off with these. I don't like the diesel engines, and I don't really like the petrol engines at all, so it kind of puts off the whole car. <laughs> So if that's just me as a mechanic, maybe I'm over the top. But we'll open the bonnet. And we'll have a look under there. You'd think a car like this would have your, your gas struts on, but it doesn't. So just bear with us. So there's your 210 brake power TSI. There was a thing about these, about them supposed to have been, uh, everybody was going about like it's turbo supercharged, it's not, it's not what it is with these, I believe it's, it's just, it's a turbocharged direct injection. Because I can't see no supercharger, clearly there isn't one. Uh, who knows, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not that interested in these to even find out, but believe, all that normally TSI stands for and 
TFSI. It just stands for direct injection petrol engine that's turbocharged. It's actually one of the first engines that had direct injection in the turbo. I don't know if these are. I can see a high pressure fuel pipe down there. But I don't know. But what I, what I do know is, <coughs> excuse me, is that uh, these stuff had bad problems with their chains and that slipping in the engine and stuff like that and going out of time back in the day because these engines were in the Skoda Octavia VRS and things like that we had a few in with 20,000 mile in the something would go wrong on the cam system or the, or the chains and they would slip just on a normal start up and uh, knock the engine it would need a whole new engine uh, apart from that the, the like the, the burn oil like no tomorrow hence the exhaust's always black uh, so you've if you've got to keep an eye keep the oil level topped up all the time uh, so and you've got to use the proper correct quantum oil in these uh, which VW rectified it used to be a 530 and now it's a, I think it's a 520 or a 020 the oil's actually green you put into these things now um, and if you don't the engines just uh, all the piston rings go they come up the the I, I do a one of these I do an Audi A5 with the same engine as this but the 1.8 the engine's about knackered to be quite honest it's uh it just burns oil all the time and the plugs are coming up on them you've got to keep changing the platinum plugs all the time uh, relatively easy to work on though oil filter here air filter plugs so they're not bad to work on at all like i say i've had this one today which are a nightmare to change bulbs you've got to try and get your hand into there and turn the little bulb holder but like i've mentioned the, the lights run all the time and they burn out the little holder so if it doesn't work this time it'll be able to get a new holder so that's as much as i can go into under the bonnet we shall move on to various parts around the car and just shut the bonnet so yeah let's have a look back in the day cover the reg up 300 pound tax back in 2014 so yeah it'll not be too expensive the tax it'll not be like a silly 500 pound one so yeah, really nice looking car, lovely colour, factory, tinted windows at the back, which so with it being the R-Line, bearing in mind this car's not been valeted, and it's got the famous old uh, Volkswagen idea, where you, the door only opens one door, we'll have a look around, and you've got you know, your R-Line step, full embossed R-Line seats, very nice and this has got the full heated seat package you've got your brushed stainless steel love these pillarless doors fantastic i am a sucker for them i love them they might not be the best for air noise and road noise and stuff but i still think they look great um yeah i'll pull the seat forward look at that you see pop a nice sporty back seats only a four seat unfortunately yeah all the nice black headlining I've just noticed something there. <laughs> so we're going to light at that side. Unless I can't see, there's nothing there. So, that's a weird thing. I have a light on the right hand side, but not on the left hand side. And let's face it, the left hand side on a three door car is the seat that you always use. Normally, so the driver doesn't want to get Strange. But. It'll be an option or something to pay for. You've got airbags all around at the back. And we shall uh, go out to the boot, which is another thing I'm not that keen on. There's no button. So, unless somebody can correct me, there's no button in the car. The only button is the key. So, if, you, if, if your battery and your remote goes flat, there's no other way opening the boot and I'm not cracking up there there's no button hidden in there to open it and I don't think there's a button oh there might be a button in the car uh, yeah so there's your back your boot not very big uh, I'm not going to go through people's belongings uh, but you know it's actually quite a big boot that for a little car it's not very high but it's quite a nice sized boot I wonder how I'm just having a button there would it or something it's Actually, I think it is being a Volkswagen. It will be. It'll be in the door down here. Yeah, down there. So I suppose, yeah, I'll take that back. And again, pillarless door. Love it. Looks great. Definitely a sucker for a pillarless door. 
Yeah, I'll eat that. So let's jump in. You've seen the seats. Like, obviously, all embossed. I'm going to shut the window because I'm sick to death of this wind today. Right, now we're into the car. Another funny spec car, this one. So you've obviously got, you know, your electric front windows, centre locking. They're not folding mirrors. They're just heated mirrors. You know, this car would have been a lot of money. 25, 30, maybe probably 30 grand with the options. And we don't have electric fold mirrors. Come on. Ford Fiesta has that. You know, that's what I don't like about the VAG group. Everything seems to be an option. You know, so you've got your, your um, kind of airbags everywhere, black roof lining. Let's do the, my favourite test of seeing. Yeah, we've got, at least we've got a light and a mirror. Light in a mirror, like see that black sun visors, sunglasses holder, and you got your lighting system up here, pretty basic, and you got your alarm with your three sensors. Moving on, over here, um, you know, I think these are a bit dated. Um, I'll move it out of the way. The this is a 2013 car. I'm trying to think back to 13. There was better kind of systems in this. I mean, let's see if the nav works. I'll just switch it on. So. Will it bring the map up? I'm just going to take it off in case it brings up my uh, exact location. Just trying to get it to uh, let us move it or something or. I think it's working now. Yeah, well, anyways, I'll show you. I'm just going to cover up where it is. So, yeah, so, obviously, there's, like, you know, it's okay. Just a bit of a tiny, basic little screen, you know what I mean? It's not really that... It, it is actually touchscreen as well, so you've got, like, a radio with a touchscreen. I don't know. I just think it looks a little bit outdated now. Um... Uh, it's okay, it works, but for this kind of calibre of car, you would expect a little bit more, I think. Bigger screen and things like that, but anyways, it's there, it works. And you've got your dual zone climate control with all your little kind of options of where you want it to be blown. You've got your full three-stage heated seats, which on a VAG is a paid option, so you would have paid quite a lot of extra for that, along with the leather in this car. Um, I'm just going to turn the fans off. And obviously, you know, you've got air conditioning, temperature at each side. I'll just turn the fan down if I can. There. Obviously, you know, so you've got your temperature at each side, which you can manually adjust, along with your automatic uh, climb, uh, circulation, picks up pollution outside. You know, all okay, you know. Um, and then we'll come round to down here. This car's got, obviously, a traction control, but it's got what you call adaptive um, suspension, which is quite an expensive option on these. So you can put it into sport, See, to put it into sport, comfort, and normal. And what it is with this car, the shock has, uh, the shock absorbers, obviously you know that they're filled with liquid. The liquid has iron filings in, and there's a big magnet on the side of each shocker. So when you put it in a sport, it engages that magnet to work, which stiffens up the iron filings in, which basically creates the, the damp has to be harder. So it's better for performance and cornering. Comfort, it just simply turns the magnet off, and the work of standard shockers, and then on a normal, which just puts it, uh, you know, a slight charge going through to keep the car to feel like an R-line, you know. Um, and as well as all of that, when you're doing the sport mode, it also uh, sharpens up the throttle response, uh, sharpens up the steering, and it does a few other things to the car. So it's got like an active body control module. It's called something DCC. It'll be classed as... I'll be, if you Google that, there'll be a special name for it. Um, so up to here, you've got your rain sensing um, wipers and your light and your automatic lights, along with a nice um, dip dim automatic dip dim mirror. Again, an option on one of these. So you can see there your automatic lamps, fog lights, and all the rest of it. Again, you've got your headlamp leveling because it's just standard halogen headlamps. The gauge, the, you know, the dials all look the same. But the one thing that's missing on this car. And all of these might say, why do I keep going on about it? What's a big deal? But it's nice to have. No cruise control. So we've got factory-fitted um, parking sensors, factory-fitted dip-dim mirror, 
extra fitted, optional extra heated leather seats. All very expensive things. Adaptive suspension, that's very expensive. Cruise control, no cruise control. So a nice car like this, you get a bottom of the range LS life spec Vectra and you get cruise control. You can get a bottom of the range Ford Mondeo and you've got cruise control as standard. Why would a car, look, look, look at this one, look at an R line. Top of the range, just about premium product. And we haven't got cruise. Yeah, it's what does my head in with some of these uh, fancy cars. The, 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 everything's just all for money, for spec, you know. It's like, we'll start it up. So, there we go. Pretty basic run-of-the-mill dash, just nothing different to a Golf, apart from it goes up to 180 mile an hour. I don't know what the top speed of this car is, but I would imagine it could probably move quite well. Um, and it's, you've just got your general options on the dash, I'll go through. Um... You know, so you've got your navigation, so you've got your navigation that comes through on it, your radio, your range, all the kind of things like that. Uh, this is all for your phone, it'll have Bluetooth and everything, um, with the built in speakers which are up here. So, yeah, you've got all like your kind of, uh, you know, fancy metal pedals. Again, uh, I think that must be your uh, USB, uh, yeah, what do you call it? Your th three mil, that's another thing. Uh, excuse me, I don't see any um, USB That's probably an option Where you could have USB, which is just a blank But you have got a 3.5mm jack plug On there Which I bet you still get is yet another option There's a memory card there, whether that's for the sat-nav I don't know um, Oh yeah, that's what it is here This has got the media in I remember this, I've got a Passat A 2006 Passat With this, and this is the cable you use So you plug that into there and then you plug the USB into it. But where the problem comes is, I don't think it likes to connect with some of these modern phones. I'm not going to try it because it's not my car. But there's something about that which I don't think uh, works. Because I tried it with my Passat. It only works with, like, iPods. And nobody has an iPod nowadays. That's a nice spongy leather armrest. I like that. You know, leather feel to the, to the um, handbrake. You know, you're reminded that you're in an R-line. Um, you know, you get a 12 volt socket down there And, you know, there's little cubby holes and cup holders and stuff But, uh, you know, that's as far as it goes with these It's a bit weird, isn't it, how I've just had a... This is a top... I know this car's getting on a bit now But, you know, just, just reviewed a Fiesta there And a Fiesta's got more spec than a top of the range Scirocco <laughs> so yeah so um if you I, I just like to do things honest um, if you would like to see any more content let us know I'm just trying to keep things to my opinion obviously they're my videos so I'm giving you my opinion if you want your opinion you can write a message let us know if, if I see anything wrong on the videos I'm quite happy to be corrected but I don't claim that I know everything I can't tell you the exact figures of you know I, I just simply do a quick google beforehand of the reg and see what um the car's like basically and what what options you get and what the engine is and that's i'm just trying to do this if you're looking at buying one of these i'm telling you a little a very basic bit of information and a quick review of the car to save you having to go out and walk around the car where you've got a salesman chasing right behind you trying to make you buy it you know and just only good clicked over 35,000 mile um the one we'll say with these cars like i've said if you're buying a petrol one make sure it's got good oil change intervals check the exhaust on the petrol ones they'll be black as the ace of spades they're all like that but just check it's not too excessive check when you start it up from cold it doesn't smoke the diesel ones i'm not that keen of the common rail ones they're not nothing special and i think if you're getting a ciroc it's probably better to have a petrol one anyways um and the rear subframes on these the front is all aluminium and stuff they're not too bad but the back subframes on these rot terribly um I had, actually this has only got thirty five thousand mile on last mot i noticed it, was, noticed it was getting quite nasty like kind of uh crusty and everything so i, I grinded it all down and recoated it with um like protection thirty five thousand mile you know it shouldn't be going like that but if you get into one of these with like a hundred thousand mile on 
and it's been up in Scotland, always look for a Scotland number plate uh, S at the beginning because the, every car that I seem to MOT, unless it was registered in Scotland for like a year or something and then brought down the country but as a general rule always be suspicious of a car number plate when it starts with S because they have long winters and the pile of salt on the roads uh, but yeah with these and it's not just the Scirocco bearing in mind this is just based on like a Golf it's the Golfs and uh, Octavias all of that rear subframes that are absolutely terrible uh, they rot badly so make sure that's okay or get it inspected properly if you get like an AA or an RAC inspection before buying it because these cars are still a lot of money so yeah if you want to know any more information leave a comment below I'll happily get back to you and thank you for watching thanks bye